Hello everyone, uh, we are going to be solving uh, one more problem on the method of uh, uh, sections. Uh, this time uh, we will use a combination of uh, the method of sections and the method of joints uh, in order to solve this uh, particular problem. Alright, so we have a method of sections. and uh, method of joints uh, used in conjunction uh, to solve this uh, particular problem and uh, we will mostly see uh, as we have seen in class that uh, the method of joints by itself is a very cumbersome method uh, we have to look at each and every pin and then uh, we have to employ equations of uh, particle equilibrium on each and every pin and uh, this is quite tedious uh, on the other hand uh, we have the method of uh, sections uh, where uh, uh, there is a, a slight amount of elegance involved uh, because you split the truss into two clean parts and then you employ the equations of uh, rigid body equilibrium. For most problems though, uh, we may have to use uh, the method of sections to find a majority of the uh, forces and then uh, we can use a method of joints for one or two pins uh, uh, as and when needed uh, in order to find the forces uh, much more quickly. And uh, so this works best uh, when we use a combination of the method of sections and uh, the method of joints. Alright, so here is the uh, problem. Uh, so we will first uh, draw the truss and then we will see what are the uh, uh, forces we need to find on here. So it's a combination of uh, a series of uh, triangular trusses as uh, shown. Okay, so we'll complete the uh, truss by drawing one more here. Uh, the dimensions are uh, of course uh, not drawn to scale uh, for the most part as you would have uh, seen by now in uh, many of the problems but I think uh, as long as we have the numbers working for us uh, that should be uh, good enough so I have a diagonal element here and then uh, these are the uh, bars of the truss uh, so I'm going to draw them uh, slightly darker here so there is uh, uh, one bar here and then uh, one more here then one here and then here uh, this one here uh, then the remaining bars of the truss uh, complete themselves and each of them are connected end to end by a pin and uh, we found out that uh, based on all the assumptions that we have each and every bar of a truss is a two force member and uh, this is based on the caveat that uh, there are no forces acting on the body of the truss itself the applied forces are all acting on the pins right so we have the following pins uh, so there's a pin here a pin joint one there and a combination of them here here and here. Uh, one of the pins here is uh, connected to the ground, is pinned to the ground here as a support and then I have a roller on this pin right here. We will give some uh, labels uh, to these very soon. Then I have a couple of uh, external forces uh, which are acting. Uh, so there is a, a 40 kN force which is acting on this pin here. Then uh, there is a 30 kN force acting on this pin here there is a 50 kN vertical force acting on this pin here and then lastly there is a 40 kN force acting on this particular pin uh, let's give them some names uh, so this is uh, pin at A this is B then this is pin C pin D pin E pin F G H and I and uh, we have some dimensions given for these uh, the horizontal lengths are all uh, 4 meters uh, of course as you can see uh, not quite uh, uh, drawn to scale there uh, so this is also 4 meters the vertical lengths are all 3 meters so that's 3 meters that's 3 meters there and that's 3 meters and then uh, that is also 3 meters Alright, so here is the truss. I have a pin support at A connected to the ground. I have a roller support at F and uh, we need to find the force in the following bars of the truss. Okay, so find uh, the force in the following bars. So we'll write down the names of these. Uh, so find force uh, along the bars So we have to find the force along the bar DC uh, and then uh, we have HC then HI, then ED, then DH, and uh, AB. 
right? So these are the bars that uh, we are interested in finding the forces, and uh, for each of them, state whether in uh, tension or in compression as the final uh, result. All right, so here is a problem. I have a series of bars which are pin connected at their ends. There are no forces acting on the body of the truss itself. Uh, there are forces acting only on the uh, pins. Uh, as you can see, the pin at E and D and B and C, there are uh, forces, vertical and horizontal forces acting. I need to find forces in only a few of the bars of the truss. Uh, let's uh, look at the bars that we are interested in. So DC is uh, right there. Then HC is right there. Then HI is uh, right there, then ED is right there, DH is uh, right there, and then AB is right there. So these are the uh, bars that we are interested in finding the forces. Um, uh, so since we are not finding forces in all the bars, uh, there is no need to use the method of joints. Uh, we are going to use a combination of the uh, uh, method of uh, sections and the method of joints. All right, uh, but the first thing is uh, we need to find the support reactions. And uh, you will see why we need to do that uh, once we use the method of sections. All right, uh, let's find the support reactions. Uh, in order to find the support reactions, I take this entire truss and then I remove it uh, from the point A and from the point F. And instead of the pin at A and the roller at F, I show uh, reaction forces. And then I, of course, also show the uh, applied loadings on the truss. All right, uh, so let's do that here. I'm going to draw the free body diagram of the entire truss and then uh, we will use equations of uh, rigid body equilibrium in order to find out uh, the reaction forces. Alright, so this is the free body diagram of the entire truss. Uh, the bars on the inside as well uh, just in case not that we are exposing any of those forces so we uh, really don't need to worry about that uh, so I start off by uh, looking at uh, support reactions first of all um, let's uh, label all these uh, points uh, before we proceed ahead uh, so this was a pin here a pin there one there one there 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 there, there, and uh, there. Uh, first of all, let's draw the um, external forces. Uh, so there is a 40 kilonewton force here, and then there is a 30 kilonewton force right there. Then there is a 50 kilonewton force, and then there is a 40 kilonewton force which is acting vertically right there. Uh, so this is uh, pin at A, then this is B, C, D. E, F, G, H, and I. And then I draw the uh, reaction forces. Uh, I'm going to have pin reactions at A. So I have an AY and an AX. And then I have an FY, which is marked here. I have dimensions uh, not drawn to scale 4 meters, 4 meters, that's 4 meters, 3 meters. 3 meters, 3 meters and uh, 3 meters right there. Alright, so this is the entire truss. I start off by uh, uh, trying to find the forces along the x and the y directions. Uh, so I'm going to sum uh, forces along the uh, x direction first. So sum of all the forces along the x direction is 0. Forces that are pointing to the right are taken as positive. You see the forces pointing to the right are AX. The rest of the forces 30 and 40 are pointing to the left. And so this tells me that AX is equal to 70 kilonewtons. This is from ordinary force balance along the X direction. Now instead of doing force balance along the Y direction because I don't know either AY or FY, I'm going to sum moments about uh, the point A. Alright, so if I do that, uh, let us sum moments about the point A being equal to 0 and then counterclockwise moments are treated as positive. If I look at Fy, Fy is going to produce a clockwise rotation. Distance of 4 plus 4 to the point A is 8 meters. So this is minus Fy times 8. Then I have the 40 kilonewton force. If I look at the direction of the moment, it's out of the page. It's a counterclockwise moment. Distance of 4 meters. All right, so then that's 40 times 4 meters. The 50 kilonewton force passes through the point A, so there is no moment due to that force. 
the 30 kN force has a moment arm of 6 meters, produces a moment that is counterclockwise, so that's going to be plus 30 times 6, and likewise a 40 times 3 counterclockwise moment, all of these set to 0. I can solve for f suffix y, so f suffix y is uh, going to be, upon solving, 57.5 kN. Right, this is uh, by using basic uh, rigid body equilibrium equations and uh, lastly some forces along the y direction is going to give me a y forces pointing up being positive I have a y and then f y as the forces pointing up minus 40 minus 50 pointing down I solve for a y because I know f y is 57.5 and I get a y to be 32.5 kilonewtons 90 minus 57.5 so that's 32.5 kilonewtons all right so we have found out uh, the support reactions uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw the truss and uh, I'm going to draw the support reactions as well uh, on them and then uh, we will see how we can employ the uh, method of sections uh, to find uh, the force in some of the bars so we found out AX to be in the same direction as we chose it to be. AY and FY were both positive and we drew them to be pointing up. So all our directions were assumed to be right and uh, we are going to be sticking to that. All right. So I redraw the truss. Uh, I am going to draw it slightly uh, bigger here. So that uh, we can employ the method of sections. Uh, so here is the truss. I complete uh, the bars inside here as well uh, because we are interested in finding the force in them and then I have uh, this piece here and then uh, this piece here and then uh, I have all the pin joints as usual and uh, importantly I have newly found support reactions which I'm going to draw here uh, so I have um, Ay, which we found to be 32.5 kilonewtons. I have Ax, uh, which was uh, 70 kilonewtons. And then I have a force on this pin here. This force was uh, 40 kilonewtons. I had a force on this pin here that was uh, 30 kilonewtons. Then I had a force on this pin here, 50 kilonewtons. I have a force on this pin that's uh, 40 kilonewton force and then Fy we found out to be 57.5 kilonewtons and then uh, let's label these uh, pins here so this is going to be uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H and then I and then distances of uh, 4 meters, 4 meters and then once again a 4 meter distance there, that's 3 meters there, and uh, that's uh, 3 meters, and then this horizontal uh, vertical length is 3 meters, this is also 3 meters, which means that uh, each of them have a slope triangle of 3, 4 and 5. Alright, uh, so now let us look at uh, the bars of the truss uh, that we are asked to find the forces on. I go back to the first page of the problem, and uh, you see, I need to find force in DC, HC, HI. Let me take a look at the first three. Okay, so DC, HC and HI. Uh, you see where DC, HC and HI are located. So I have DC, I have HC and then I have HI. And uh, so you see if I come back to this figure here, I have DC, I have HC and then I have HI. And if I cut the truss this way, so if I pass a section this way, you see that first of all I am cutting through only three bars of the truss. And uh, why are we cutting through only three bars? This is because we have only three equations of equilibrium. And uh, if you cut through more than uh, three unknown forces, then uh, you are not going to be able to solve for these unknown forces uh, because you don't have uh, uh, extra equations of equilibrium. Right? So this is going to be my first cut so that I expose the force along the bar DC, I expose the force along bar HC, and then along the bar HI. And then I could either use uh, the uh, 
top portion of the dress or the bottom portion of the dress this is completely our choice and uh, for me I feel that uh, using the bottom portion is going to be much easier so I'm going to shade that uh, particular portion that I'm going to be drawing and uh, we will uh, see uh, what can be done uh, from that all right so I'm going to be taking this particular piece and then I'm going to be redrawing that on the next page uh, but before that we always assume that every bar of a truss is in tension which means that the force of the bar will be pointing away from the cut whenever we look at it okay so assume the bars to be in tension which means that the force of the bars will point away from the cut and uh, this is uh, very similar to cutting a cable cables are always in a state of tension right uh, which means that when you cut a cable the force along the uh, cable will be pointing away from the cut all right uh, so i'm going to look at this uh, little cut here uh, i will show this again uh, when we draw the piece on the next page all right so here is the uh, here is the cut uh, this is the piece uh, that I'm interested in drawing. Uh, don't forget that there are all these external forces and support reactions as well. And then I'm also exposing the force along the bars DC, HC and HI. Right? So we are cutting through these three bars. Uh, we are cutting through no more than uh, three bars. So cut through bars DC, HC and then HI. Your aim is to find as many of the unknown forces as possible using a single cut. But of course, um, for the most case, uh, it is not sufficient uh, to just find uh, the forces using a single cut. Uh, we might end up uh, using either the method of joints and to find the forces in the other bars or uh, we might uh, end up making multiple cuts. Multiple cuts are also perfectly fine. Alright, so once I do that, uh, here is the cut piece. I'm first going to draw it in a pen and then uh, we will see what we can do about that. Um, so here is the that piece All right and then I draw these horizontal ones and uh, I'm going to draw the uh, cuts as uh, uh, darkened so this is uh, essentially cutting through here this is cutting through here and so for me uh, the bars that are actually visible are the following so this is visible this bar is visible, this is visible, this is also visible, this little piece is visible, this entire bar is visible, this little piece here is visible and this little piece here is visible as well. I complete the joints, uh, so I have the uh, following joints here, so I have one here, one there, one there and then one there and then I have these uh, ghost joints you know they, they're essentially not a part of the uh, truss but I'm still going to mark them here uh, so there are two of them um, then we draw the force coming out from the cut so there is one that is pointing this way then there is one that is pointing this way and then there is one that is pointing this particular way uh, so then I have uh, reaction forces, I have the applied forces and so on and so forth. Uh, so these are the reaction forces AY, which was 32.5 kilonewtons. And then AX was uh, 70 kilonewtons. I had an applied force here, 40 kilonewtons. And then I have a force here of uh, 30 kilonewtons. And then this force here is uh, going to be the force along the bar. Uh, b before that, uh, let, let me draw the uh, pins. Uh, so this is A, B, C, D. This is uh, pin H and then this is pin I. D and H are actually not a part of the uh, uh, figure. They're just drawn there to complete the triangles. Uh, so this is F, D, C. And then this force is going to be F, H, I. And then this is going to be F, H, C. And you see that uh, each of these forces are always pointing away from the cut. Right. Uh, so whenever you're drawing the forces, um, draw the forces as to be pointing away from the cut, which means that these bars are said to be in a state of tension. And I have some uh, dimensions, of course. Uh, these are 3 meters. This is also 3 meters. And of course, uh, distance from 
H uh, on to D is also uh, 3 meters and I have a distance of uh, 4 meters right here all right uh, so uh, this is a representative figure uh, the key point here is to draw the force of the bars to point away from the cut this is the key point and uh, you see the reason why we need the support reactions now right because if I looked at just this piece here I have FDC which is unknown FHC is unknown and FHI is also unknown uh, but then uh, if I did not find out AX and AY to begin with uh, then probably we would not be able to find any of these forces because I would be left with five unknowns and uh, we have only three equations and uh, this is not possible to find out Okay, so I'm going to redraw this uh, slightly bigger and then uh, we will keep uh, referring back to this one uh, every once in a while. Right, so here is the uh, cut piece. I'm going to draw it slightly bigger. Um, I think I'm going to draw it in pen first. Right, I complete the figures. Right, and uh, here was the cut actually. Uh, there was also this bar uh, which was uh, coming on here. Um, so I'll complete this as well, uh, but we will uh, we will look at uh, the force. Uh, we will show it in a different color, as as we did earlier on. So I have the cut, which is uh, shown here. Then I have the forces uh, which are pointing away from here. These are the forces. There is one more force which is pointing in this direction. Then I have one more force which is pointing this way. I have all these uh, pins here. This pin does not exist for us, uh, but we are still uh, going to be drawing that. Uh, so these are the uh, forces. Uh, once more, these are the forces that are coming out from the bars that have been exposed because of the cut and then I have some um, applied forces here and I have applied forces here I have some reaction forces right there all right uh, so this is going to be 32.5 kilonewtons this is a 70 kilonewton force this is a 40 kilonewton force this is a 30 kilonewton force and then I have the force on these bars themselves uh, first of all this is uh, uh, here are the uh, pins so this is pin A B C D is not a part of the figure this is pin H and then this is pin I and uh, let's look at some uh, distances here uh, between pin H and uh, pin D we have a distance between pin H and pin I and then this distance here so each of these uh, uh, distances are 3 meters so this is 3 meters this is also 3 meters this is 3 meters uh, this distance is uh, 4 meters right there all right and uh, we have the force along uh, each of these bars uh, so this is going to be F D C uh, this is going to be F H I and then this is going to be F H C now for F D C uh, we know that uh, we have a nice uh, slope triangle so this is 3 meters and this is 4 meters uh, so for F D C just by itself you know if I draw the force uh, this is uh, from the point C and then this is uh, going towards the point uh, D so this is F D C I have a slope triangle here and this is going to be 3 
and then 4 which means I can find out the horizontal component of FDC I can find the vertical component of FDC so this is 3 fifths FDC and this is 4 fifths FDC alright uh, this is just for uh, the bar FDC alone so we are not uh, uh, showing it as a part of the uh, problem but uh, here is the cut uh, so this is the cut and uh, here is the uh, piece that we have drawn and uh, now you see the reason behind finding the support reactions alright so once we do this uh, then all we are left to do is employ equations of rigid body equilibrium uh, summation of forces uh, summation of moments uh, we can choose uh, whatever we want to do here uh, so I'm going to start off uh, by summing moments about uh, the point D uh, for this particular problem. So let's uh, sum moments about the point D. I'll just write this particular case out here and then uh, we will uh, uh, solve the rest of the problem in remaining pages. Uh, so sum of moments about D, counterclockwise moments are treated as positive. If I sum moments about D, you see that FDC has a line of action passing through D. F HI has a line of action passing through D which means that FHC is the only unknown force that is going to cause a mo moment about the point D and if I use a right hand rule this is going to be into the board or into the page and this is FHC times 3 right so let's write these things out so this is minus FHC times 3 this is the first moment then I have the 30 kN force times a distance of 3 meters that is also a clockwise uh, moment uh, so that's going to be minus 30 times 3 then I have the 40 kN force a 40 kN force distance of 6 meters I look at the moment produced palm facing the point D my fingers aligned with the force of 40 kN I curl my fingers into the page and this is clockwise as well so this is minus uh, 40 times a distance of 6 meters and then lastly I have this 32.5 kN force has a line of action passing through the point D so that is not going to cause a moment about the point D but then the 70 kN force produces a moment that is counterclockwise distance of 3 plus 3 plus 3 which is 9 so this is 70 times 9 all of it put together is equal to 0 so I can solve for FHC and uh, so FHC upon uh, solving is going to give you 100 kilonewtons as a positive value uh, so FHC uh, I'll, uh, make sure that this is not a part of the answer here so FHC is a hundred kilonewtons and this is the value that we obtain and uh, this is uh, obtained as a positive number uh, that's because the 70 times 9 is a very large value compared to 30 times 3 and 40 times 6 and so FHC is said to be in tension. Now let's find the rest of the uh, forces as well. I take a look at uh, the figure once again uh, now my aim is to find out uh, each of these forces as quickly as we can right uh, so that's basically uh, what we want to do and uh, so I sum moments about the point D in order to find out FHC I could do pretty much the same thing I could uh, sum moments about the point H and I could find FDC and uh, we know from before that FDC has uh, two components 3 fifths FDC and 4 fifths FDC I'm going to draw those components right here so there is going to be, so this is the point C, this is where the force is starting and uh, this component is going to be 3 fifths FDC and then there is going to be a component here which I am going to write out is uh, 4 fifths FDC. So there are two components of FDC itself and I am going to sum moments about the point H. Alright, so sum of moments about the point H is uh, 0 counterclockwise moments are treated as uh, positive. If I do that uh, then you see automatically that FHI is going to pass through the point H. It does not contribute to any moment about that point. Then FHC also has a line of action passing through that. So this is knocked off. If I look at 4 fifths FDC you see that that component has a line of action passing through H which means that only the 3 fifths FDC component uh, causes a rotation about the point H and right hand rule shows that it's 3 fifths FDC times a distance of 4 meters counterclockwise. So this is 3 fifths FDC times a distance of 4 meters. Uh, what other forces cause a moment about H? You see the 30 kN force has a line of action passing through H so no moment due to that force. 40 kN force 
if you see that use the right hand rule produces a moment that is in the clockwise sense a distance of 3 meters and so this is going to be minus 40 times 3 and then lastly I have uh, this 32.5 kilonewton force it has a line of action which passes through the point H so that does not cause a moment about that point I have lastly 70 kilonewton force which produces a moment counterclockwise distance of 3 plus 3 6 meters all the way from point A to point H right so this is going to be 70 times 6 all of them set together is equal to 0 if I solve for FDC you will find out that this is larger than that so FDC has to be in compression uh, so solving for FDC, I have FDC as uh, minus 125 kN. If you get a negative sign, we maintain the negative sign and then we eventually when we write the final set of answers, uh, we will say that FDC is in a state of uh, compression. Alright, last thing to find out, I go back to my figure, uh, the last thing to find out is uh, the force FHI. Uh, now there are two ways uh, that we can do this I can either sum forces along the y direction because I know FDC this force, this force and this force are the only forces along the y direction or I can sum moments about the point C and uh, both ways are going to give us the same answer I'm going to sum forces along the y direction alright, uh, so if I do that uh, so let's sum forces along the y direction forces pointing up are treated as uh, positive look at all the forces I have uh, this force here which is 32.5 which is uh, AY so I'm going to add that first then I'm going to have the force FHI which is in the vertical direction as well in the positive uh, vertical direction FHI and then I have this component of FDC which is 3 fifths FDC which is pointing straight up that's equal to 0 now here we have to be careful so F H I is minus 32.5 minus 3 fifths F D C but F D C is minus 125 which means that upon solving for F H I I get a value of uh, 42.5 kilonewtons which means it's a positive number which means that this force is in a state of tension uh, we could have obtained the same results if we, if we looked at the uh, other cut as well if you had uh, looked at uh, uh, taking a look at this uh, figure where we first made the cut we could have taken a look at this piece as well we would have obtained the same answers uh, there is no difference between the two pieces uh, we just take a piece that is convenient to us all right uh, so going back to the main uh, question uh, so in this question uh, we have found out uh, the following uh, so I have found out FDC so FDC is done, then we found out FHC and then we found out FHI using the method of sections. Now let's take a look at uh, the, the bar AB. You see bar AB is right here, right? Uh, which means that I could just draw the pin diagram at the point A and then I could find out FAB. I could just use the method of joints and uh, this is exactly what I'm going to do next. Alright, uh, so employing the method of uh, joints uh, to find the force on the bar AB, uh, we do the following. So pin A, we draw the free body diagram of the pin at A. Uh, so look at the forces acting on the pin at A. Uh, so I first of all have, uh, uh, if I look at uh, the free body diagram right here, this is a better diagram here. I have AX and I have AY, so I have to mark them both. Right? So I have AX which is uh, 70 kilonewtons and then I have AY which is 32.5 kilonewtons and then I have the remaining forces I have FAI which is uh, assumed to be in tension AB is also assumed to be in tension uh, so I have FAB and then I have FAI our aim is to find FAB we have a nice uh, slope triangle here so you look at AB I have a 3 4 uh, 5 slope triangle so I'm going to look at that uh, here so this is a 3 4 5 uh, slope triangle right there this is 4 and then this is 3 so I split AB into components one component along the horizontal and then one component along the vertical so this is going to be 4 fifths FAB and then this is going to be 3 fifths FAB once we split them into components my aim is to find FAB and all I have to do is sum forces up along the horizontal direction so sum of forces along the x-axis is equal to 0 gives me AX which is 70 and then I have plus 
4 by 5 FAB and nothing else this is equal to 0 which means I can solve for FAB and upon solving I'll find that this is negative right so this is a uh, minus 87.5 kilonewtons right so I can use the method of joints at the pin A and I can find out FAB so we have found out FAB here so we can knock that off the list as well now I have ED and DH so look at ED ED is this bar right there and then I have DH is this bar right here and uh, you see I could I could use a method of sections if I wanted to I could uh, cut off here I could uh, section through here I could find ED that way but then that does not give me DH or I could cut through and uh, come across the bar HI the bar HC and the bar DH and the bar ED but that's cutting through more than three and uh, even though we know HI and HC it is still going to be cumbersome if I can use a method of joints I can get done with this uh, really quickly uh, so we're going to use a method of joints at the uh, point D all right so let's do this here on a new page So I'm going to draw the pin diagram at uh, D, uh, look at the pin diagram at D, so what are all the bars that we have here, uh, first of all I have the 50 kN force which is acting uh, vertically down, so there is this uh, 50 kN force, then I have FDH which is acting uh, as supposed to be in tension, so this is FDH, then I have F DE or FED which is assumed to be in tension as well all right so this is FDE or FED it is all the same thing and then FDC we had assumed FDC to be in a state of tension but then we found out uh, from our calculations that FDC was actually 125 kilonewtons negative so I'm just going to draw it still to be in tension but I'm going to say this is minus 125 kilonewtons and then I have a nice uh, slope triangle from before uh, this is a 3, 4 and a 5 slope triangle so I'm going to take FDC I'm going to break it into two components I'm going to have a component in this direction so that's 4 fifths FDC and then I'm going to have a component of DC in this direction that's going to be 3 fifths FDC and uh, so this is the pin free body diagram at D all we have to do is sum forces up in the vertical and the horizontal directions Alright, uh, so I'll start off with the uh, forces along the uh, horizontal direction. So x is equal to 0, all the forces pointing to the right. I have minus FDE pointing to the left. I have plus 4 fifths FDC pointing to the right, and uh, that's about it. These are all equal to 0, which means FDE is 4 fifths FDC, which is minus 125. So FDE is actually in a state of compression and uh, this is minus 100 kilonewtons and uh, we do the same thing in the y direction as well uh, so I sum forces up along the uh, y direction I set that uh, up and I equal to 0 forces along the y direction I see that I have a minus 50 kilonewton force acting down then I have minus F dh and then I have minus 3 fifths FDC to be pointing down all of these set to equal 0 and then I have FDH as minus 50 minus 3 fifths times FDC which is minus 125 and so if you solve for FDH I get this to be a positive value approximately 25 kilonewtons all right so we were able to find uh, the remaining forces as well so FDE which is the same as FED and then FDH uh, were able to be uh, found out uh, using the method of joints. So in this problem we used a combination of uh, the method of sections. So our first cut was through the bars DC, HC and HI. We exposed the forces along these bars and then uh, we said that okay I could use a method of joints at the point A, find out the force FAB and then once I know DC I can use a method of joints at the point D and I can find FED and FDH. And if you are seeking zero force members, the only zero force member, if, if you are interested in this, uh, the only zero force member is uh, EG right here. Because if I look at the pin G, I draw the pin free body diagram at G, I have two forces here. I have the third force which is F 
EG and then uh, you see that these two are collinear according to our criterion one of the criteria that we looked at in class this is the zero force member so FEG is actually a zero force member not that this was a part of the problem but uh, we were just uh, interested in finding them all right uh, so summary of results uh, uh, will be listed as uh, follows so we will not be putting the negative signs uh, we will be saying the bars are either in tension or in compression uh, so we use the method of sections to find the following we found our f h c to be 100 kilonewtons in tension then f d c was minus 125 kilonewtons which means this is in compression and then f h i was uh, 42.5 kilonewtons in tension and then we used method of uh, joints to find f a b which we found out to be in compression 87.5 kilonewtons and then uh, f d e which is the same as FED, there is no difference between the two and uh, this was uh, also in compression 100 kilonewtons and then finally FDH or FHD was 25 kilonewtons in tension right so the uh, moral of the story here is that you can use the method of sections and the method of joints in the same problem or you could use a method of sections multiple times that is also perfectly fine um, so uh, the method can be used as many times as you need you could use a method of joints and all the pins you could use a method of sections you could section the truss as many times as you want but uh, you have to section it every time you section it you have to cut it into two clean pieces and each of the pieces has to be handled in the form of a rigid body in equilibrium and uh, you will have only three equations for a 2D rigid body in equilibrium which means that uh, you should not be cutting through more than three unknown forces or unknown bars at a time. Thank you.